streams in the desert. The bright summer sun seemed to have been causing problems with the camera angle, so I had to move it away from some of the flowers that we have and get it back in the shade so it could <laughs> not get fried, which is kind of like where sometimes some people get. You know, you can. The old expression used to be, you could be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. And I used to say, no, you could be so heavenly minded that you're all earthly good. But there is a point to be made about that, is that sometimes when you have too much of a religious life and not enough of a contact with people who need to hear and see who you are in Jesus, that we get so spiritually minded that we talk only things that no one else understands. Things, that, you know, like tongues or gifts or, you know, words of knowledge and things that people, other people might not have any reference to. So, there's a good part of that that, you know, it's nice to be able to say and share and when you go to church, do that and care. But, there's also a reality of the everyday practical life that, yes, you are still the same person. Yes, you can still share Jesus. Yes, you can still talk in liturgies. But you can tone it down some so that it's not quite so bright because sometimes people that are blind, once they begin to see the light, they need a little shade. So take it in measure and take it in steps. Take it a little bit each day. Even as devotionals, you take what you can handle and you apply it to your life. And God doesn't come in and say, okay, today I'm going to make you perfect. <laughs> he may consider you perfect, like your loved ones might or might not, but he doesn't make you perfect overnight. It's a day-by-day, step-by-step process. And I think that's part of the issue that we need to remind ourselves is that in talking to people and sharing, it's a day-by-day, step-by-step process. Don't try to make everyone saved in one day, like I used to do in the Jesus movement, but rather get to know the person, you know, and if you care, then you'll be there. And after salvation, care enough to follow up and love that person into a knowledge and a relationship with Jesus, not just a, you know, altar call and that's all. <laughs> because if you do, then you won't have this issue that people talk about as far as being are you truly saved? Or are you truly not? And truly, truly, I say unto you that thou art not saved unless you've done it my way. <laughs> I don't think that's the Jesus I found, you know, or I experienced. But today, my own peace I give to you, from John 14, 27. Two painters each painted a picture to illustrate his conception of rest. The first chose for his scene a still, lone lake among the far off mountains. The second threw on his canvas a thundering waterfall <clears throat> with a fragile branch tree bending over the foam and at the fork of the branch, almost wet with the cataract spray, sat a robin on its nest. The first was only stagnation, the last was rest. Christ's life outwardly was one of the most troubled lives that ever lived. Tempest and tumult, tumult and tempest. Don't you just love the T-words? <laughs> the waves breaking over it all the time until the worn body was laid in the grave. But the inner life was a sea of glass. The great calm was always there. At any moment, you might have gone to him and found rest. And even when the human bloodhounds were dogging him in the streets of Jerusalem, he turned to his disciples and offered them as a last legacy, my peace. Rest is not a hollow feeling that comes over us in church. It is the repose of a heart set deep in God. You know, it's, it's amazing to me because the same thing is true of God. You know, it's like people talk about on the seventh day he rested. You know, and they get into this whole thing about doing and then don't realize that there is a rest. There is a deep-seated contentment, a realization that Hey, you know, the house is on fire. Well, okay. You know, having said that, there's a new way that they t teach first responders to react to a crisis situation. And do you know what the first, what the new 
as we always come up with, the new concept is for people that are crisis responders, look and evaluate the situation. Don't just rush in. In other words, the first thing is to get a grip, get a handle on it, look at it, you know, understand whether or not you should be running in or whether you should be seeking support or sending someone to go get aid or whatever it may be. But it's not just automatically dive in. The guy that sees a man drowning, you know, it sounds like you should just jump in. But if the water's 32 degrees and it's 40 below outside, I'm not diving in, I'm getting a rope. <laughs> So you have to evaluate the circumstances that you're in before you just go for it with what you think you should do. And the same is true with God, is that God wants you to seek Him in everything that you do. He doesn't want you to just dive in with what you were programmed to do, even if it's religiously right. Because in this circumstance, it might not be spiritually known to you what it is that God is doing in that moment. So don't just dive in with your own understanding and planning <clears throat> and the way that you've been trained, but in every circumstance or situation, always evaluate it. Always listen carefully for that little hint of God maybe tapping you on the shoulder and saying, uh-uh, this one's not for you. Or, eh, you know, don't do it. Or, go for it. Because it's too easy, it's way too easy to just think you know it all in some automatic response and that might not be what's going on you know I know for a mother you know the, the child that falls down the first time there's a diving for it but when a child is first learning to walk after a while when you watch him fall down you kind of go okay one down baby gets back up falls down again gets back up falls down again guess what <laughs> you know when to respond and when not to in our devotionals, the same thing is true. It's easy to make everything guilt-ridden or complex or weird, but if it doesn't fit, don't do it. If it works for you, do it. It's that simple. God is not complicated. Jesus is not far away. He has always been inside you since the day you called upon him and said, Lord, save me. Come into my heart, come into my life. I give you my life, I give you control. And from that moment on, whether you took it back or not, he's still working. So, don't make it so hard on yourself. Find that place of rest in your salvation. That place of realization that God is doing his work in you. And you know what? Even though the thorns will be there, the sunburn, sunshine, skin cancer, the, uh, rest that God wants for you will be one of confidence <laughs> and people around you will look at you and wonder how you got so wise daily by reading his word and devotionals if they speak to you